Joining us to speak rather more about the efforts to send aid to Israel, Niall Stanich, White House columnist at The Hill. Niall, thanks so much for staying with us. Good to be with you, Natasha. So let's say in a hypothetical world, the House fills the speaker position tomorrow. Does this proposed aid package for Israel and Ukraine immediately pass, and why or why not? I think it is likely to pass very, very quickly. Now, it may be tweaked around the edges, but the basic dynamic here is that there are an enormous number of House members in both parties who want that aid for Israel. Yes, there are some on the left of the Democratic Party who are skeptical. When it comes to Ukraine, there are some on the right of the Republican Party who are skeptical. But this is one of the rare things where there is bipartisan support for action. If there's a speaker, I would expect this to pass promptly. Okay, and this proposed aid is not just for Israel, but also for Ukraine, the border, for other issues as well. First of all, is this a very strategic and smart move by President Biden, or does the width of this bill make it any less likely to pass compared to just a standalone Israel bill? No, to the contrary, I actually think that there is a, a political strategy involved in hitching these issues together. And interestingly enough, it's one that is backed by Senate Majority Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, as well as President Biden. The idea, in essence, is the leadership on both parties does want aid for Ukraine and does want aid for Israel. Therefore, if you put them both together, that makes people who are reluctant to one, they would then have to vote against the other, if you see what I mean. They're not eager to do that, and so the linkage of the issues is designed to maximize support. Okay. As we mentioned earlier in our newscast, some military experts believe that both Israel and Hamas are breaking the rules of armed conflict, the rules of war. Could that be a factor in affecting if and how much American aid goes to Israel? Do Americans care about Israel potentially breaking uh, any rules of war? Does our political system care about that? That's such a great question. That's one of those questions I wish we had 20 minutes to discuss. Obviously, it is important that any nation abides by the rule of law and the laws of war. Obviously, it is important if Israel is breaking those just as Hamas carried out that horrendous attack. The problem politically is Israel's behavior has been often condemned by many other segments of the international community. And there has never been that much evidence that the American body politic cares. I mean, the Israeli occupation of the West Bank has been going on for decades, illegal under international law. But American politicians of either party don't seem particularly eager to do anything about it. The annexation of land on which Israeli settlements are built would be illegal under international law. What has America tried to do to stop it, really? So I think that's the problem. These are serious charges that need to be carefully considered. There isn't a lot of evidence that the American body politic would stop aid to Israel on that basis. You know, there is a clip that is circulating online right now of President Biden uh, from decades and decades ago talking about why Israel is so important beyond ideological friendship and our allyship, why it is so strategically important for it to remain intact in the Middle East for the United States. Can you help put that into context for us beyond just a friendship and a, and a longstanding allyship? Why is it so important that Israel does not fall? Well, I think from the United States point of view, there are several reasons. I mean, the fact that it is the only true democracy in the region, despite its flaws and, and faults, which we can get to, it is a parliamentary democracy. The fact that it is a key U.S. ally is obviously important. And I think when you look at polls, I mean, the American public broadly sympathize with the Israelis much more than the Palestinians in the conflict as a whole. And I think that gets to the idea that Americans view Israel as endangered, encircled by Arab nations, and under threat. In large other regions of the world, not only the Arab world, the situation is seen as exactly the inverse of that, where Israel is seen, I think, as the aggressor occupying Palestinian lands in the West Bank and obviously carrying out the actions it's carrying out in Gaza. And what are you tracking in terms of um, potential GOP presidential candidates uh, this weekend on the ground in Iowa, making comments, really using this as a talking point in this moment and trading barbs with one another, quite frankly? Yes, that's particularly prominent in the case of Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, who have gone back and forth on issues including the uh, desirability or otherwise of resettling refugees from Gaza in the United States. 
Broadly speaking, what we're seeing in the Republican field is a rush to adopt the most hawkish possible position. And I think that's, uh, well, it may well be sincere, but it is also a recognition of the politics of a Republican primary. Those dynamics are ones in which your chances are increased the more hawkish a position you adopt and the more strongly you condemn the Biden administration for perceived weakness. I think that's essentially what's going on. There. Okay, Niall Stanich, always appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.